Hi there and welcome to my channel. Today's project is for the Vicky Boutin design team and today's project is inspired by rainbows on the new ideas paper. That's the best way to put it. So um, I already had this idea for a previous project but today I just wanted to have something that was going to be very colorful that was going to come together pretty quick and I wanted to have something that was that emphasized paper. So first thing I'm going to do, again, this is the new ideas paper. I'm going to cut each one of the color swatches or cards, whichever way you want to call them. I just want to isolate each one of the colors. So you're going to see that I'm just using my paper trimmer um, and they're not the same size. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to just, go, like I said, I'm isolating the colors. There's pretty much a rainbow of colors here. So that's one of the reasons why I pulled this paper and also because the blue paper or the blue swatch matches the colors in the photo of my little cousins. And they were just like we went to a wedding and they were like, I don't know you call them rainbow or like the flower girls. And uh, they were had this color and the and the waist and it matches the color of the paper. So my idea is I wanna use the little cards or swatches, whichever name you want to give them, to create my layout. So I'm just going to play with them and create a rainbow with a little bit of movement in the car. So you're going to see that I'm going to tuck them in, I'm going to move them, I'm going to create kind of a, a little chevron design with them, and I like the way it's sitting. It reminds me like, you know, when you see those, um, sometimes the commercials have those little tiles of colors falling, that's what it reminds me of. So here's one thing. I happened to knock not knock but i hit the tripod that had the camera and i didn't realize that i by accident i moved the autofocus of my lens so you're gonna be a little bit of fussiness for a little bit and then when i realized it i fixed it and uh, you're gonna see it nothing wrong you're gonna see it, it's just a little bit fussy but the gist of it is there so i'm gonna use um these are are crayons for my background and I'm using a foundation paper and what I want to create is stripes of watercolor on the background that have the same tones as in the papers so remember I took a picture of the paper so I know which way the order is so I'm starting with fuchsia and for that I'm mixing the fuchsia crayon with a little bit of the red crayon just scribble it on my mat some water to dilute it and I'm using a flat brush and a flat brush is just something that's going to give you a straight line um if you use a watercolor brush is it's a better idea i'm using vicky's all set of watercolor brushes so i have like a medium flat and a large flat brush and i'm going to use both just because it makes it easier for me to start washing the brushes and all i'm going to do is create a watercolor stri strip yeah or stripe that goes from left to right i just flip the paper because it makes it easier to go up and down to draw the line but they're going to go from left to right and i want to follow the color colors that I have on my paper. I have a uh, fuchsia or pink, I have orange, yellow, then I have that olive green, then I have a green, teal and blue and that's the formation that I have on my papers and that's what I'm going to follow. I don't want to cover the entire pink area with pink, I just want a little strip. Think of it as just the top strip of the card that's the color that I'm picking. So once I've created my pink and I did not stop working in between this, the watercolor here, I continue working uh, in one single frame. And but that I mean is the watercolor that I apply in this case, the pink one was still wet when I went in with the orange. And I did that on purpose so that the colors mix in the center, even though a lot of this is gonna be hidden. And I knew that from the beginning, but I still know that it's on the background. Okay, so keep that in mind. And that's why you're going to see me that I'm going to put more effort towards the edges of my application than in the center. And in the edges, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, my, if you've seen my work, then you know that I love splatters. But what I want to have is different sizes of splatters and I want them to combine a bit. So that's one of the reasons why I'm not stopping the drawing my stripes in between like i said i'm doing it all in one frame so that i can pick on the previous color and that's going to help me also with my splatters and all i'm going to do is just dilute the crayon and just kind of shake my brush at the end of the stripes on the left and on the right and then to have those big splatters i literally i squish my bristles so that i have that big splatter 
as simple as that if you're using a piece of acetate or plastic then just lift up your plastic slightly and let that drop fall and that's gonna create a big splatter simple as that and again I clean up the orange because I don't want to have that reddish tone instead I'm gonna start fresh I'm using the two yellow crayons and literally I'm just gonna continuous work uh, continuously work that the color the watercolor stripes and I'm gonna make sure that um, like I said that I keep working while the previous paint is still wet so that there's a nice fusion in between even though it's gonna be hidden I don't mind it I just it helped me with like also the lines it helped me keep you know the same um, distance and sizes and all that stuff and it just speed up it sped up the process quite a bit just to continuously working like that so again I'm gonna put my efforts towards the edges of the um, mixed media in this case background instead of the center because the center is going to be covered by my paper and i'm okay with that i know people always say that you create all this watercolor and you cover it unfortunately the when you create this type of pages you know that if i wanted to do just uh you know watercolor and mixed media i could easily just put my picture and a few embellishments and that's okay but i really wanted to use these papers i really love the fact that it has you know that ombre effect that you have that movement in the paper and i i do i love paper i have tons of it and i want to use it because i think it's beautiful and it's just going to enhance this layout so I'm just going to continue working for to create the green actually I'm using as a neutral set there is an olive and kind of an ochre tone and that's going to give me that perfect green that kind of olive green and then I'm going to go into the cool tones I'm going to clean my mat in between because I don't want to have any of the warm tones and here's where I realized that my camera was out of focus so I went and fixed it and you're going to see it now better so you're going to see right now I've added my colors and I want to accent those splatters so I'm just going in i'm wearing my brush and i'm just literally gonna think of it as i'm painting my crayon so i'm getting those richer tones of the drips to fall at the edges i just want that deeper tone um and that's about it as simple as that i'm gonna set that aside to dry this layout i had the footage together it was an hour and five minutes that's long that's how long it took me to create just because i don't have when you apply watercolor this way it's such a thin application that it dries pretty quickly so one of the things i'm gonna do though when it comes back to like you know my layout is ready to put together is i wanna kind of um, lift up the edges of my paper and I'm doing this because I don't want it to lay flat on the on the mat I want to have a little bit of movement just because you have all these straight lines and I love straight lines if you see me I'm, I'm a lover of a ruler I'm a lover of a guillotine because it just gives me those clean lines but in this case I do want to have a little bit of movement at the edges of my little squares or cars whatever you want to call them just because I have the mixed media on the background and then I have my phone on the side you don't see it but I have it so that I know there you go you're gonna see it uh, and it's plain and I have the picture so that it helps me guiding the papers again this is a great idea uh, when you put something down and you don't want to glue it you're not ready to glue it take a picture of it so it makes it easier for you to like you know go back and have a point of reference for when you're building your layout especially when you do mixed media you need to pull anything you put on top of the layer away to add the mixed media take a picture and then come back so it's easier for you to put it together so again I'm just playing with my papers I am gonna start adding the car so that I have the pink at the top orange yellow you're gonna see that I'm going slightly every time that I'm gluing those I'm going towards the left and then once I get to the olive I'm actually gonna flip it so that the darkest color is at the bottom so that I pick the blue from the bottom that's the only um, slight change and and then I'm just going to again, I'm going to ruffle the edges a little bit. And once I hit the um, the olive, the greenish tone, I'm going to start going the opposite way. So kind of creating a chevron. I'm creating movement on my page. One of the things that I do is if you see the new ideas paper, which is the one this has, that has these cards, there's a piece that has like, it looks pretty much white, like this dress. But the little edge has a little bit of like burgundy kind of uh, like purplish. And I'm actually going to use that at the bottom because I thought it was a nice way to cap off the rainbow. 
and I'm gonna make sure that the piece that had the little grid that was with the purple kind of violet tone is gonna be the one sticking out from the formation of the papers so that I can bring some of the purple into this page and then I am not gonna glue the blue at the bottom of the page instead I'm gonna glue it right at the center so that I can glue my picture right there so you're gonna see like I said when I created this layer I just play with the paper until I was happy with what it looked like once I have that in place I'm actually gonna come in and start playing not playing but just working with the picture one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a dark blue background just so that it like you know it just frames the picture nicely um, and I'm using I can't remember what paper this is but it has the flowers on the one side and that deep navy tone on the other one and then I'm gonna add a piece of actually the specialty paper just because it has that shine that I'm looking for um, and I don't have a complete piece I have just little pieces so I'm just gonna piece it together behind it just to create a frame after that you're gonna see I'm gonna add some foam adhesive behind the photo just so to give it some lift from all the layers of paper I want to make sure that it pops from the page and it's the first thing you see when you look at, at the picture at the layout sorry and then I'm gonna place it a little bit um off center from I don't want it to be framed in that bluish car I want it to be a little bit higher so that it kind of think of it like I said I, I was thinking of movement I don't know when you see a bouncing ball it goes down and up but it kind of create it covers the same line I don't know I think it's my math brain that's working on this but I like that and then I have two sets of the florals you know those flowers that come um they're layered and they were the perfect embellishment for this just because it has those tones that I have on the background so I'm going to color block my design and by that I mean I'm going to add uh, elements or embellishments that match the color of um, where I'm applying them to so fuchsia is gonna go in the fuchsia area yellow is gonna go in the yellow or and so on so you're gonna see that I place my flowers so that they each sit in a specific color just because I had those tones of um, you know green and teal and yellow orange and uh, purple and pink and then I had a purple one so I'm gonna bring that kind of purple bluish tone at the bottom just to complete my rainbow once I had my flowers I went into the chipboard stickers and there's this little kind of banners flags that have the same tones so again color blocking I'm putting the ones that match the tones and then I wanted to bring more florals I went into the icon ephemera and I'm pulling out flowers that match the tones there's no flowers that match the green so instead I went into the tablet and I pulled one of the white flowers and I'm just gonna cut some of the extra leaves from those big florals that I know I'm not gonna use the leaves from there just at the bottom just to help me bulk up the uh, cluster a little bit of foam adhesive behind it it's all you need the bottom flower actually also comes from the tablet like the sticker tablet and it had like those kind of purplish tones even though it has orange it doesn't bug me because it kind of ties everything together um and i'm okay with cutting ephemera it works fine as long as it helps me with my my uh final layout it's all good so once I have that I think one of the things that you don't see in the camera is that I am also going to add a small embellishments like little hearts a little bit of those puffy stickers just to each um, so that they match the colors behind it I just wanted to emphasize some of the colors and I don't think I'm going to do much more than that just because there's quite a bit of paper I don't want to hide the stuff I want everything to shine nicely for my title I went into the journaling ephemera and there's a big sense that says be colorful and I really wanted to use that because it has a white offset on the back and I need that so that it pops from the page and I also picked that because the uh, the dresses the girls are wearing are white so it just kind of picks up on the colors that I'm using I'm gonna add my lines to journal in that um, in that piece of olive paper to the left of the picture I didn't want to use anything else I want I don't want to add anything on the mixed media I think it's beautiful it's just a little bit uh, and just to finish I am using some gold ink you can easily dilute a little bit of the gold glaze it wasn't just handy it was um, in another place at that moment so I just used my gold ink splatter it um, around my layout and that's about it I love how this turned out. Like I said, there was an hour and nine minutes, I think, of footage, and I did not stop. I only stopped when I realized that I had hit the camera uh, just to fix the lens. 
but that's about it as always if you have any questions do not hesitate to contact me check the blog for more details and thank you so much for joining me and i hope to see you soon take care guys